We're gonna warm you up first. We'll do a couple warm ups and then we're just gonna practice singing this, okay? You got me? Yes. Alright, here we go. Alright, you guys remember me, made my own goals? Yes. I need your big, I need your bright voices, okay? Everybody's sitting up straight. Okay, you're not leaning in your chair, you're not daydreaming, you're just focusing on your sound. Listen to your sound, listen to the piano, and listen to each other so you can match each other's pitch, all right? Here we go. And you guys are right here. I'm right here, though. Follow my hands. Everybody watch. This is hey, start, go. My hands are going to take you through the entire process. Follow my hands. $25,000. But it was a serious, and it was an old school microphone, had a lot of quality. This is when I was working in the studio. But this was nowhere near that price. And what happens, this right here is called an audio interface, right? And it's basically, all I have to do is go USB inside this computer right here. See that? Just like if you were to plug up your iPod in there. And basically, the audio comes from here 
from your voice, right? Or your signal through this wire right here. These are called XLRs. They go into the interface. And the interface is basically the mediator between your voice and getting everything inside the computer. Alright, all I need you to do is just two more times. I just want you guys to sing this. Follow me. Hey. One, two, three. You gotta make it a big sound, guys, okay? Bigger. One, two, ready, loud. Hey, start, go. Cause the shack is banging. For a show, you know that we can't go on until you start to make it so flow like you know. Okay, I'm gonna lip sync with you. I'm not gonna make any sounds. Just follow my lips next time, okay? Turn my mic gain up a little bit. Six, there it is. One, two, follow me, and. Hey, start, go. Cause the shack is banging. For show, you know that we can't go on until you start to make it so flow like you know. That last one was really nice. The signal looks like this. So, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like on the uh, smart board so we can continue. I'll play it for you, and then we'll be moving on. This is you guys. Yeah. And that's interesting, right? You can kind of almost hear your own voice a little bit because you have one of the higher pitched voices and you have one of the lower pitched voices. You can hear the extreme highs and extreme lows. Everyone else we kind of format somewhere in the middle. So listen to how this sounds compared to what you did three weeks ago. In terms of attack and release, this was three weeks ago. Take a listen. No. So, you know. Okay. Prior to working here, one of the perks for me, basically working here, was I found out that the school uses Macs, one, instead of PCs, and I actually had a lot of, a, a large background using Macs. Um, prior to working at this school, I was interning and working as a second assistant engineer in a very famous uh, recording studio called Chung King. And coming here and making the transformation, it's been easier. And I found out that one of the music tools we use in music technology is GarageBand. And I've actually been using GarageBand prior to working with this school in 2008. Was about, um, I was already using it for about two and a half years. So with the software, like any other software, what happens is eventually it always updates and updates. So finally, by the time we got here, we kind of hit the ground and we were rolling. So what the students are doing now is they're basically arranging music. They're taking pre-existing loops and uh, beat patterns and melodies, and they're just constructing them together, arranging them together. And eventually what we, where we want to grow is usually towards the end of, let's say, a garage band unit, what we do is we have them composing. So therefore, instead of taking pre-existing loops, they're making them themselves, which is very, very fun. That's, you know, basically the, the whole production process. But sometimes a lot of arrangement is involved, too, as well. And today was a uh, special treat because I took some of those same uh, fundamentals that I learned in the studio, 
about miking. I'm by far, I'm not the greatest engineer out there. I don't even consider myself an engineer. I'm like an intern assistant. I'm good at running to get coffee. But still being in a room with some of the greatest assistants, uh, artists, and some engineers, you learn a couple things. And um, this is better because it gives the students a real world feel. And the other good thing about this is if students really get inspired by this, then what they can do is they can take the time themselves. So let's say when they're finished with this school, if any of them, you don't have to own a Mac, you can work with other programs, but if you do have one on your own, you can take some of the things you learn here and practice on your own. And it just, it, it's, I wish I had something like this when I was coming up. I mean, thank God for band and all those other music courses that I've taken, but if there was something like this that allowed you, especially technology today, allows you to harness the power of a complete professional studio, even though the quality isn't the same, but you're talking about having access to uh, dozens of uh, audio effects like compressors, EQs, uh, reverbs, um, and uh, different types of instruments harnessed in one computer, then from there you can begin to grow and just learn how to do something that's totally new. This is the art of making uh, music and really virtually any type of music. When you take the approach, when, well, when you have that confidence that you can create it, it just does so many more things. And then what happens is perhaps it leads down to a path of just maybe music isn't your thing, but maybe audio is your thing and sound and just working with computers. Maybe I can get a better sound now and work on becoming a better vocalist or a better musician. But it's something, it's interesting because here, especially at this charter school, even though we've still always addressed and I've always addressed the, uh, the state standards for music and what middle schoolers are doing in music, I said, once they told me, I, I, I remember the day, it was 2008, and they're like, they present the contract, and a technology um, coordinator at the time, he asked me, he's like, please tell me you know how to use a Mac, and I'm like, yeah, I have a G5 at home, and it, he just had this huge, like, smile, like a jack-o'-lantern, because basically, at that point, everyone coming in, faculty members, they had to be retort, because everyone was used to using PCs. Then I said, Mac, huh? So I was like, so what are you guys doing with GarageBand? And then his eyes lit up again, and he's like, I'm glad you asked. And I'm saying, I'm glad you tell me. So from that point, I said, you know, I'm just going to create a, a curriculum for it. I'm going to create some unit plans. And we're just going to hit the ground running. And, and we've done projects in the past. Like uh, we created jingles, uh, commercials, like commercials that you would hear on the radio with the students providing the written content, arranging the music, and reciting it. So they were the talent. It's basically like outsourcing within the school. So it's insourcing. It really worked for us, and since we're talking about 21st century skills, every school, if they can find a way to get it, should definitely incorporate this. Nothing against the uh, traditional ways of, of teaching music, and I still do that too, but today it's important to do both. It's like anything, podcasting, creating sound beds for internet if you want to start your own website, creating sound beds for other companies doing training, and just, just having a lot of fun too at the same time.